Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the BIOS on the Gigabyte 8520i AC, just so you can see how it all works and potentially make some tweaks to make your system a little bit faster. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the BIOS for the Gigabyte A520i AC. This is a very cost-effective mini ITX motherboard on the market at the moment, and some of you may be picking this up and want to tweak it to try and get the best out of your system, or maybe you're just starting off from fresh and you've never built a PC and you want to know how to set up your BIOS. The actual settings are pretty much going to be semi-universal across most of the range, but with this particular version, we are going to be using a Ryzen 5 4600G with integrated graphics, so we can take a look at some of those settings as well. So if you're potentially doing this in a smaller form factor system, such as this one, then you may find some settings which will be beneficial. And first of all, I'm gonna actually get rid of some of the noise which is going on here with the uh, handy mics unboxing pillow. And uh, there, get rid of the noise of the power supply. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are, we're in the BIOS. Uh, for those of you not sure how to actually enter the BIOS, all you need to do is when you're turning on your PC for the first time, just tap the delete key until you get the BIOS screen come up. So this is the first one you're gonna get. So this is currently in easy mode various things displayed on the screen to start with. So you've got the time and date up in the top corner. If yours is wrong, don't worry about it. You can change that later and then save it to the BIOS and the CMOS battery will retain those settings as it will for the rest of the things we're doing here. So you've got information on the left, motherboard model, BIOS revision. And for those of you wondering, yes, this is the one which mitigates the security flaws within the Gigabyte BIOSes. So yes, that's been done. We've also got processor name and also Radeon graphics and the amount of RAM we've got. Current CPU frequency, CPU temperature, system temperature, voltages, memory voltage, PCH temperature and VRM temperature. So all those are absolutely fine. If your VRM temperature here is looking a little bit on the high side, then potentially your system uh, might need a little bit of extra cooling or potentially if your CPU temperature here is rising very fast, then maybe you've not mounted your CPU correctly or your CPU cooler. So do check those out. So they should all be roughly round about ambient temperatures of the room, plus round about 10 degrees. So currently in this room, it's about 23, 24 degrees. So this is absolutely within normal tolerances. We've also got our memory frequency there, which currently isn't running at its optimum speed. So we do need to change that. Uh, you've got your DRAM status there. So for both slots shows you what is in each slot. So we've got an eight gig memory module in each one. XMP currently set to disabled. And we've got our boot sequence down here. Smart fan is revealing to us the current fan RPMs for both the CPU fan and the system fan. Obviously, if you don't have a fan connected, there'll be nothing showing here. I would definitely check that the CPU fan actually is showing something there, or potentially you may not have connected up your CPU fan. Again, that might actually give you your higher CPU temps here. So on the right-hand side, we've got the options for changing the language. There's a help function there. You've got the advanced mode, you can switch to that using F2 or just click on it. Smart fan five, you can press by hitting F6. You can load your optimized defaults, which for some people actually might be the way forward. You've also got the option to enter key flash for flashing the bars, save and exit, and also the option for favorites. So yeah, pretty much straightforward stuff there. If you want to enable XMP, which is pretty much what most people are gonna to wanna to do, just click on that. And there isn't any toggles on this one for various options. We've only got one option for DDR4-4000. So it just loads the profile and press it again. No, oh, actually, no, there is another profile. So you may want to click that a couple of times to toggle through the settings for you. Uh, we're gonna use DDR4-4000 actually once we've rebooted. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, we could show what was actually connected to our PCI Express bus, but there's nothing. And the same for M.2, we've got no M.2 drives connected. Again, you can check those there if you want to. So that is pretty much what most people are gonna to wanna to see. And for a lot of you, just enabling XMP should be fine, possibly changing your boot sequence. You can with these, uh, move them around, change it whatever you want. If you haven't got Windows installed, you won't have this Windows boot manager here. So I mean, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we'll click on escape to go back a level. So that is pretty much it for easy mode and the basic layout. So let's head over into advanced mode. So we're gonna press F2 or click on that button there and you can go through. So first of all, you've got your favorites page. So you can actually change these to pretty much whatever you want for quick access to. You can do that by pressing um, the insert key and plus or minus changing the items, etc. I never change these, but you certainly can if you want to. 
Again, you've also got quick access at the bottom there for other things, so help function, easy mode, smart fan. So if you do F1 help, you can then go through it. I'll tell you more about what is actually on your screen currently. So next up, we go into uh, Tweaker. So this is basically the first lot of settings. So you've got your CPU clock control currently set to auto. You can set that manually should you wish to uh, for a little bit of PCI Express overclocking, which actually probably be beneficial on this because we don't have any overclocking as such because this is an A520 chipset. So if you do want to do a little bit of manual overclocking, you could maybe set your PCI Express bus to maybe 103 or 105 megahertz, which will give you a, a little bit of a boost in speeds. Although it will put stress on the rest of the system on the PCI Express bus, so uh, do bear that in mind. For all intents and purposes, that is uh, kind of pretty much here in Tweaker. You can look at other settings, uh, memory sub timings, but there's uh, very little you can actually do. All right, so you can you can actually change your memory timings. Uh, if you're not too sure, just put a zero in, and it will return it back to the normal setting. So yeah, that is pretty much it for uh, memory in the Tweaker. And you can get your SPD information from your RAM modules. Again, not a great deal we can do here. So yeah, don't be expecting uh, too much. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much it for Tweaker. There's not really anything else on there. You've got CPU, VRM settings. Uh, you might actually want to change this. So your load line calibration, you can set to various levels for both the CPU and the uh, SOC. So if you want to, you can choose various settings there. I actually found I put on Ultra Extreme and mine was actually performing worse. So your mileage may vary. If you've got the time and you want to mess around with it, then feel free to do so. You can adjust your calibration there. Um, I would say leave it to auto. Again, for the uh, SOC vCore, you can choose whatever you want there. Again, just uh, do some tests, run some benchmarks, and see what works out for you. So that's kind of it for Tweaker. So we'll go into the main settings now. So we've got platform power, first of all. So you've got AC back. So if you have a power cut, do you want your PC to turn itself back on? Yes or no? Uh, I've got it set to always off, but you can have it so that it remembers what setting it was currently on. So if the PC was on, it will turn it back on. If the PC was off, it will leave it off. But um, I choose always off. ERP, so this is a um, energy efficiency setting. So if you turn on ERP, it will give you enhanced sleep states and go into a deeper sleep. And also things like your USB ports won't be working in standby, which for some people you may find that beneficial. We've got... RGB keyboard and mouse, then you might want to turn those off. So if you enable ERP, then uh, your USB ports will be disabled in sleep modes. You've got a choice for soft off by power button. So you can have instant off or delay, choose whatever you want to. You've got your power loading, uh, enabled, disabled, or auto. Again, I would set that to actually auto. Resume by alarm, so you can actually have the system to wake up at a certain designated time, whether it's on a day, whether it's an hour, minute, second, whatever you can choose. And also wake on LAN, uh, so if you want it to wake up when it gets pinged, you can set it to enable. You've got your high provision event timer, I would leave that enabled for modern operating systems. And you've got your CEC 2019 ready, uh, you might as well leave that off. So that is pretty much it for platform power. Uh, IO ports can be something which I would suggest actually going into here and definitely changing settings. If you have a PCI Express graphics card and also you've got a integrated IP, IGP or whatever, you, this is where you change your settings. So your initial display output is currently set to PCIe slot one. We don't actually have a graphics card in here at the moment. So let's set that back to uh, integrated video. So it's not gonna look for a graphics card when we boot up. And integrated graphics, you can have for auto, forces or disabled. If you go into forces, it will actually even if you do put a graphics card in physically into your PCI Express slots, it will still keep the onboard graphics working as well. So if you need to connect up multiple monitors through various HDMI ports or whatever, then you may find that useful. Um, in terms of Windows, it probably makes Windows slightly less stable having two lots of graphics cards to contend with. So again, choose your uh, thing wisely. If you are gonna be using a dedicated graphics card, you can set it to disabled. But again, if you use auto, it will kind of recognize whether or not there's a graphics card, integrated or not, and it will work out the best settings for you. Now, HD audio controller, so you can choose to enable or disable that. If you're using a separate USB DAC, then of course you can disable that should you want to, just to simplify your audio. You've got your PCI Express bifurcation, so you can set it to auto, or you can choose what lanes do what, so you can have it so that you've got PCI Express um, one times eight, and slot two is by four. 
I would leave that to auto, especially on an ITX board, it'll work out for you better. Above 4G decoding, I would enable that. Most games really do prefer that now. And resizable bar, I could I would set to auto, which basically means on. Onboard LAN controller, most people are gonna to wanna to keep that enabled, but for some reason, if you just wanna use Wi-Fi, then you can use that, uh, set that to disabled. It won't use the LAN ports. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this one is one we might want to actually enable or disable depending on your preferences actually. This is the App Center download and install configuration. So by default now with Windows 10 and Windows 11, when your system first boots up after installing Windows, there will be a pop-up on the taskbar saying, do you want to install the Gigabyte App Center and install all that kind of stuff? So you can choose whether that is enabled or not. Uh, pretty much most motherboards are doing this now, MSI are, ASUS are, uh, I'm pretty sure ASRock are as well. So again, choice here. Uh, you can choose it to be enabled or disabled. I leave it enabled, it makes it easier. So if you're uh, building a system, it will just try and go to the driver's page for you and install that kind of stuff. You're probably gonna wanna install things like the RGB software and maybe uh, SIV for gigabyte boards just to control fans, etc. within Windows. Again, entirely up to you, enable or disable it. Your super IO, so serial port. If you've got a serial port connected, then you leave that enabled. I would disable it just to free up some resources. It's not a great deal, but if you're not using it, you might as well disable it. You've got your USB configuration. Um, I would leave this pretty much as standard. If you're using a USB keyboard and mouse, then I would leave legacy support enabled. And certain USB devices that may be older may need that as well. You've got your handoff, USB mass storage driver support. You can have that enabled or disabled. I would leave that enabled, especially if you're gonna be installing Windows from a USB stick. Port 64 and 60 emulation, again, that is for non-plug-in play aware operating systems. So if you've got a USB keyboard and mouse and you wanna use it in your uh, non-supported or non-USB aware operating systems, you can choose to have it emulate a PS2 keyboard or not, choice is entirely yours. Um, I would leave it disabled unless you're using an operating system which actually needs it. Next up is going to be your NVMe configuration. We've got no drives here, so I can't really show you that, but it's uh, pretty simple. It just tells you what drive it is. SATA configuration, so you've got your SATA mode. You can choose whether it's uh, AHCI mode or RAID. If you're just installing normal Windows with a single drive, I would set it to AHCI. If you are going to be setting up RAID with uh, some sort of RAID striping, uh, mirroring, whatever, then obviously choose RAID. You will need to install drivers in Windows or before Windows installs actually to uh, be able to install Windows. So you can get that from the Gigabyte website. Most people I think will just leave that to AHCI. You've got your uh, NVMe RAID mode, that's set to disabled. I don't think you can actually even do that anyway because you've only got one NVMe slot. So you can't do RAID on here. So yeah, it's pointless actually having the option to enable it. Uh, chipset SATA port enable. So you can choose whether your SATA ports are enabled or disabled. And also you can choose whether or not the SATA chipset ports are a hot plug. Again, might as well leave those as enabled. It's not gonna cause any problems. And underneath there, it's gonna tell you what drives are physically connected. We've got Kioxia Xeria SATA SSD, 480 gigabyte connected on SATA port one. Next up is your network stack. Again, you can have your network stack enabled or disabled. That's for the uh, UEFI. So if you're booting an operating system over the network, that kind of thing, then you can enable that. Most people don't need it enabled, so I'd leave it off and then it tells you your MAC address for your gigabit controller and also the um, UEFI status of it, etc., etc. Uh, we'll go back to settings for the miscellaneous. So miscellaneous, you've got your LEDs in system power off state. So if you want your LEDs to flash or whatever when the system is uh, on, or if you just want it to have your LEDs off because it's in a bedroom or something, but your PC's left on, then yeah, you can choose whatever you do, uh, whether they're on or off, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, LEDs in sleep, hibernation, and soft off states. Again, if your PC's gone into sleep, you don't want the LEDs on or flashing away, your hard drive LEDs, etc. So those are probably best left to off. Your PCIe 16 slot configuration, you've got auto. If you're using an older graphics card on this, uh, you can choose Gen 2. Realistically, because this is limited to PCI Express Gen 3 anyway, um, if you put a Gen 4 card in there, it's gonna work as a Gen 3 anyway. So I don't really see any reason to change that unless maybe you're using some kind of NVMe um, or some sort of drive expansion card or maybe a capture card, which prefers to be on Gen 2 or Gen 1, whatever. I would leave that set to auto. Your PCI Express slot, again, you can choose there, same sort of things. Uh, you've got your uh, ASPM mode, 
for PCI Express, you can have that enabled or disabled. If you're using a Intel graphics card, uh, A570 or A750 or A770, those, if you want to enter them into low power states, you will have to have L1 enabled. So potentially you might want to change that, but most people, um, you just leave it disabled and the uh, operating system will take care of that for you. 3D Mark 01 enhancement, uh, leave that disabled, it's pointless. And the IO MMU, so if you need to have that, you can have it enabled or disabled or auto. We'll leave it as auto just in case it's ever needed by the system. Uh, TSME, not entirely sure what that is, I'll be honest with you. I will find out and put it in the uh, this comments section below or on screen now. Yeah, I have no idea what that is for. I think it's something to do with trusted computing because underneath we've got your AMD CPU FTPM. So if you are using Windows 11, you'll need to have that enabled. And then you can go into trusted computing, look at your security settings, etc. As long as it's on and it's found a device, then you should be absolutely fine. AMD CBS, so this is basically the only kind of overclocking options you've got. So you've got your uh, XMR or XFR rather, precision boost and all that kind of stuff. So you can set that to uh, manual settings. So you can set your PPT limits, uh, TDCs and EDCs and your scaler. So you can choose whatever you want to for overclocking your processor. I would say for most people, I would just leave it to enable or maybe auto, depending on what you want to do. So you've got your clock frequencies, SOC overclock and your U-clock uh, division one mode. You can choose auto or use your uh, U-clock to be the same as your memory clock or memory clock times two or divided by two. I would leave that to auto unless you know what you're doing with your specific RAM settings. Uh, custom P core states, so you can choose those as well. Um, again, set custom, you can change those. Most people probably won't need to do that at all, so I'm actually gonna leave that to auto. Uh, memory e interleaving, I'd leave that set to auto as well, and your uh, PCIe ARRI support, leave that to auto. CPU common functions, so you've got performance. Again, custom P states, just another way of getting to it. Prefetcher, you can set your own settings there and your core watchdog timer. I would, again, leave that to auto. Then you've got your other options there, but they are, again, leave it to auto unless you know exactly what you're doing or you know you need to change it to increase performance or for some specific reason. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, DF common options, again, same sort of stuff. So if you want to change anything there, you can. UMC. You've got your DDR4 options, timing, configuration, uh, overclock, you can set to auto or enabled, all that kind of usual stuff. Um, yeah, security stuff. Probably stuff you'll never ever need. Uh, DDR memory mapping, you can choose to do that should you need to. Your PHY configuration, training, etc. After this stuff, I have no idea what it is and I don't think I've ever used it. Um, so you probably won't need to either. Again, if you've got any specific questions about any of this stuff, let me know in the comments and I'll find out as best I can the information for you. MBIO common options, so you can choose to set up, um, this is basically your Northbridge IO, MBIO stands for Northbridge, so this is things which are built into the processor such as your audio configuration, your graphics configuration, etc. So if you want to do anything in here, um, especially with your graphics, so your iGPU, you can choose again various different things, so either an auto disabled, specified auto or game optimized if you go into specified you can then choose your frame buffer size so how much memory is allocated uh, or dedicated to the graphics realistically for the sort of onboard graphics especially for am4 realistically ton of two gigs is pretty much going to be it if you've got the ram to spare you can set the four gigs my suggestion would be run some benchmarks see what works best for you Potentially, you probably find that actually setting it to auto and let it dynamically allocate is going to be the best way of doing it. So again, you can choose uh, specified or auto. Game optimized actually might be uh, might be beneficial. Actually, yeah, I'm going to leave it as game optimized. Uh, next one again, XFR enhancement. So this is your precision boost overdrive. Just another way of getting into it. And you've got your SMU common options. So your SMU common options. You've got fan control, uh, system temperature tracking. ST APM control, smart shift, and system configuration. So you can actually choose in here your TDP. So if you want to, and you want to lower the actual system power usage, you can set it to 35 watts if your processor supports it, 45 watts, 65. Um, yeah, I think the uh, 65 watt consumer is pretty much the normal setting. 
if you set it to auto, I'm pretty sure it just does that anyway. So that is going to be the highest performing. Uh, that one is going to be slightly less performing, so it's for commercial systems. So it's going to run it a little bit more um, conservatively. And you've got the same thing with the 35 watt and 45 watt, which are the same for commercial and consumer. So it's just uh, reducing power consumption from your initial 65 watt TDP. Uh, CPPC, I, again, I'm not actually sure what that is. So I'm going to leave that alone. So I think that's pretty much it for those sections there. So let's go into PC Health. This is just going to basically tell you your voltages. This actually might be useful. So if you're getting weird blue screens or issues, just check your 3.3. Uh, I nearly pointed to the screen there, but you can't see it. So uh, the 3.3 volt, your 5 volt, and your 12 volt. So all of those should be basically kind of pretty stable and within that normal boundary. So if, for instance, your 3.3 volt says 3.0 or 3.1, it might be your 3.3 rail is dipping a little bit, so your power supply might be on its way out. Uh, same for the 5 volt. If it's under 5 volts, then it's something to worry about. And again, 12 volt, same sort of deal. So we're actually 12 and a half volts there at the moment, so that's absolutely fine. Realistically, a little bit of over voltage isn't too bad. Under voltage is, is worse, because when the system's trying to grab power and there's not enough voltage there, that's when you get your blue screens or your error messages. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for there. Smart Fan 5, so if you want to set up your fans, this is actually pretty straightforward stuff. They've done a reasonably good job of this. So currently it's monitoring the CPU fan. You can choose between the various fan headers on the board, of which there are... I thought there was only one extra one, but maybe there is two. Um, I must have missed that. So yeah, your CPU fan, so if you want to set it, Normal is the default if you want to set it to manual and create your own fan noise profile. So say for instance you want your CPU cooler just to run that little bit cooler, you can drag these down and then you can choose to apply that. Actually let's change the um, control mode. So we've got a PWM fan, so I'm going to set it manually to PWM. Um, I'm actually going to enable fan stop as well because this potentially could be a media center PC. So we want the fans to turn off if they're not necessary. And you can choose whether or not it, uh, well, for the CPU fan, you can't change it, but for the other fans, you can get them to monitor either the CPU or the motherboard. So there is manual control. So if you want to, just set it to normal, silent, or full speed if you want to. The choice is yours. So if you do apply to, you can choose which fans it applies to. So I'm only going to choose our CPU fan. If you want to select that and have all the fans react the same, then you can highlight those as you can see there. So just click on those. So let's just do that for the CPU fan. And then we'll go into system fan one, which currently isn't connected. You see it's all grayed out. It's a system fan two. And actually, yeah, that is showing an RPM. What's system fan one showing? Yeah, zero RPM. So there is nothing there. So system fan two, the reason why that is on there, I think is because it's actually a three pin. So we're gonna have to set that to voltage and we'll set it to manual. And there we go, so now we can adjust our fan profile. Let's uh, see if we can make that a little bit quieter. Uh, I don't want it to be stopping at any point, so I'm gonna leave that set to disabled. And we'll do apply to, and we'll deselect those. Click okay, there we go. So there is our fan range set. Yeah, the temperature, temperature control on this one, you can choose options as well. The um, VOC, your VRMs, CPU, or your PCH. Depending on which way you want to do it, really, I would probably say CPU is probably actually the better one to do. So I'm going to click Apply To again. Click OK, because we want it to be uh, dependent on our processor speed, because we don't have a graphics card in here. So there we go, that's absolutely fine. Again, you can have fan warnings, etc., all that usual stuff, and it tells you your temps there. So if you want to monitor it while you're changing your speeds, you certainly can do. So that is, uh, I think that is going to be pretty much it for settings. System info, again, pretty much more of the same. Uh, you can choose QFlash as well to go into QFlash to flash the BIOS. And also you've got your boot options there. Uh, secure boot you'll probably need to enable because of Windows 11. CSM support. If you've got an older drive which uh, isn't recognized in Windows or isn't recognized in setup when you're trying to install, you will need to enable CSM support. Although if you're using Secure Boot, 
then potentially you might not be able to because of compatibility. So that is something we're going to have to start getting used to with older drives. If you can, the best thing to do is just format your drives and use the UEFI format, GPT rather than MBR, etc. And uh, that is pretty much it for that. So you've obviously got save and exit, or actually boot option priorities. You can see those there as well. So then you can go into save and exit and you've got options there. Save and exit setup. So if you're happy, save and exit. Uh, you can exit without saving, so if you're not too sure, have I made a mistake, then you can leave that. You, you can also load the optimized defaults, and you've got your boot override. So if you um, have your boot priority set to your main drive, but you actually just want to boot from maybe a uh, USB drive, you can click on the drive or select the drive, and uh, it will choose that to boot from the next time you reboot the system. So we come in there and yeah, that is pretty much it. So we can, once we're happy, we can save and exit and save all our settings to the CMOS. Okay, so there you go. There is a BOSS tour of the Gigabyte A520i AC. Uh, pretty straightforward. There's not really a great deal in there. You can dig in a little bit more depth if you want to, but realistically overclocking manually is probably not gonna be the easiest of things. You can turn on XMP, like we said, with the memory, or maybe increase the PCI Express bus slightly to get a little bit more frequency. But other than that, it's a pretty basic board, but it does what it needs to do and it fits into a pretty decent price point. Any questions on this one? Let us know in the comments section below. If you want a more direct and quicker answer, don't forget we have got a Discord. You can join there and you can ask technical questions in any of the technical support rooms and we'll do our best to try and answer them for you. Well, I think that's going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.